Assalamu alaikum. Are you really interested to get band 8 in IELTS writing component? If so, then you are at the right place. This is not only a video. This is actually an interactive lesson, a complete lesson. You have to work along with me and at the end, you will, will be capable to get band 8 in IELTS writing component. I'll teach you from very special document of British Council for IELTS professional. I'm Imran Ali Imran, a gold level IELTS trainer. I'm leading an institute in Faisalabad, which is the gold level business partner institute of British Council. In the commencement of today's lecture, you had to do something very special thing. You had to follow me here and let's go to the stream. I'm going to share something, something very special so that you can understand. So let's start here. Getting band eight in IELTS, writing component. And this is actually the video one of the five videos. I'll uh, show you the five videos. Uh, for that, this is video one. So let's move ahead. This is an interactive lesson training video. And the skill level of this video is actually the professional. And consider it like a Bible like an IELTS Bible. This video is only for those students who are dedicated to fight for band seven to nine. If you will work along with this lesson video, you will surely get band eight plus. 100 person working and tested techniques of X IELTS examiner will be explained here. And not one thing. In this video, you may need to reverse Revise, stop, and play again. This will sharp your brain, so encourage your brain to concentrate till the last line. Are you ready? So let's have target band. I'll learn from this interactive lesson. You must follow me through all this creative writing sequence. Number two, have a notebook with you. Number three, hold a lead pencil with eraser. Number four, continue following commands here. In this first lesson, you will learn about the different kinds of writing you may be asked to do in the test, practice reading and understanding tables, look at different ways of expressing numbers, Practice brainstorming ideas for compositions. Revise language for expressing purpose, cause and effect. Look at ways of writing problem and solution type compositions. So let's move towards the activity one. Activity one is actually the IELTS writing test types of writing. It will be nearly a five minutes. Every one of you have to spend five minutes. So here is a command. You have to stop this video for five minutes and then you have to stop this video. I cannot do that because in this way, the video will prolong. I'll try to practice this in my next video. But right now, there is something before you. This is actually um, a task which will take five minutes. On your cell phone, you have to start a timer, a countdown timer of five minutes, and then you can play that timer on your notebook. You have to do accordingly. So what you do is, let me tell you again. This is activity one, the IELTS writing test type of writing, five minutes. Below is a list of types of writing, writing you have to do in the IELTS test. Task one and writing task Two. So what you do is here you can see with the mouse that there are some statements. These are actually the question types, and over here there are the two types of the boxes. There is one for the task one, it's called information transfer, and task two, discursive composition. So what to do is we have to find out that what type of essay will fall in what type. For example. Compare and contrast points of view. Describe an object or system. Evaluate and challenge ideas or an argument. Explain how something works. 
justify an opinion, organize, present, and compare data, describe the stages of a process, present a solution to a problem, present evidence to support an opinion. So you have to start your stopwatch and you can um, take ten min uh, five minutes to write down that, for example, compare and contrast points of view. What will be type of this essay? It will be in task two, discursive composition. And describe an object or a system. This is actually, we have described some object or system. This type of the question actually comes in the task one because it is information transfer. So move ahead. You can stop this video over here. You can pause the video. And then after five minutes, if you complete all this task, then you can listen the answer over here after resuming the video. Let's discuss the answers. Number one, compare and contrast points view. It will be in task two because it is discursive composition. Describe an object or a system. So in, over here we have to describe a system. It will be in uh, task one because it is information transfer. The third one is evaluate and challenge ideas or an argument. Over here the ideas or argument will be given. So you have to write an essay because it cannot arrive. This type of a question cannot be arrived there in part or the task one. It should be in the task two here. Next is explain how something works, task one. Justify an opinion, task two. Organize, present, and compare data. It is comparing, organizing of the data which will be given over here. So data type of, of questions are not um, expected there in the discursive composition. So this is actually the task one. Describe the stages of a process. We have described the process stages here. So it is actually the task one, information transfer. And after that, present a solution to a problem. A problem will be given to you in the form of essay, I suppose, and you have to give a solution and that will be in the discursive composition. Next, present evidence to support an opinion. It will also be there in uh, uh, the discursive composition. Got it? Let's move to the next slide. This was actually the slide over here to describe you how to define these two. Now, come towards the activity too. Keep in mind you have to work along. When I complete this one, you have to start your cell phone timer and you have to feel and you have to assess yourself with how much time your personal brain is consuming to, to solve this, this activity. For example, activity two, understanding tables, 10 minutes. It will be nearly for 10 minutes. Your brain should consume less than 10 minutes, or it is actually for the standard brain that will consume 10 minutes for that. In IELTS writing task one, you may be asked to describe data given in a table before you begin writing, take a few minutes to read and understand the table. Think about the following. Read the instructions carefully. These will tell you what the table shows. Does the table have a title? If it does, read it carefully so that you know what the table is about. Is the table static or dynamic? This is very, very important. We have to find out what is the static and what is the dynamic table. I'm gonna show you again here. Is the table static or dynamic? Static tables show data at one point in time. Dynamic tables show how data changes over time. This will affect the language you use in your description. What do the columns and rows represent? What unit of measurement does each cell represent? Kilometers, euros, and liters. Very, very important. We have to keep in mind that what type of uh, the 
the units are explained over there, whether they are the kilometers, the euros, or liters, or whatever they are. Be clear about what the table does not show. Very, very important. Numerous students write something which the table does not show. They, they don't know what to write, actually. And they should keep in mind that keep in mind what the table does not show. Don't write that. I'll explain to you later. Now, this is the table over here. And over here, underneath, there is actually the source that I have written the source there. So let's read the table first. Uh, here's my picture at the side. Read this IELTS test and then decide whether the statement which follows are true or false, or if it is impossible to tell from the data, choose T, F, or M. Got it? So the table below shows how the percentage of British adults who use the internet change over a five years period. Write a report for a university lecturer describing the information shown below. But keep in mind, you are writing for a university lecturer. This is the key word here. It means you had to write very good words. Keep that sense in mind. Percentage of adults in Great Britain who have used the internet for three months before being interviewed. Now, read again. Percentage of adults in Great Britain who have used the internet for three months before being interviewed. Now keep my, my uh, one point in your uh, brain, that is, you have to read the topic or the table or the question three times. One, two, three. Read that for three times. Your brain will calculate meanwhile that what is the question and what is the question asking and what is uh, your duty to do over there, for example. Over here, percentage of Great Britain who have used the internet for three months before being interviewed. So what to do is, no, sorry for that, uh, over here. So read what is on the X axis and what information is given on the Y axis. So if we talk about the X axis, there are the years and the same month, that is October. 2000, October 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, and 2005. Over here in the X in the Y axis, it is age groups. Well, let's start from the 16 to 24, 25 to 44, 45 to 54, and 55 to 64. These are actually the age groups. Now look at the table. Whenever you look at the table, you have to keep one thing in your brain that the maximum value and minimum value. Which one is the maximum one and which one is the minimum one? For example, over here, look at the data. The maximum length goes towards October 90, and then look at the, the, there, uh, and there's also 88, then go 87, or these are the maximum values. The lower values are over here, 24, okay, and over here you can say the 41, 51, there's lower values. But if you look from left side to right side, all the values are increasing. So there is a one trend which is very, very obvious. We'll penetrate into this question later to find out more. So here is a link given uh, underneath to find the next link here. To find the, the actually the static sticks uh, the table is taken from. And below is the link given. Now come towards the question here. What to do is, no, you have to open and you have to start your uh, cell phone timer and consume 10 minutes to solve this. And your regular brain will consume maximum five minutes for that. But you should give 10 minutes. And if your brain is taking more, then it means that you have to work on yourself more. Read this table task and then decide whether the statement which falls are true or false. Or if it is impossible to tell from the data, choose T, F, or M. Now I'm waiting. You have to pause the video and you can revise the video. Go for the last 
a slide and then come for the next slide. You can go back and go and go forward. You have to move to and fro to find the answer. Play with the video. Now I'm ready. Okay, now let's discuss the question. Number one, the table shows the number of people in Great Britain who use the internet. True, false, impossible. If you use your brain that you have studied over there, it is true. How to find that? The table shows the number of the people in Great Britain who use the internet. True, false, or impossible. Go at the back side. What the table shows? The table below shows how the percentage of British either adults who use the internet changed over five years of the period. Now look at this. The number shows the number of the people in Great Britain who use the internet. True. So the answer, the first answer is true. Second, the table shows the percentage of people in Great Britain who use the internet between July and October each year. True, false, or impossible to tell. Now look at that table again. There's no July here. There's no month of July. So it is false. You can write false over here because it is not true. It's false. The table shows change over time. It means it's dynamic. True, false, or impossible. So it is showing the changes over time. It is, it is actually 2000, and 2001, and two and three. And this is actually the data is changing. It means it is the dynamic one. So the answer is true. In 2000, in October 2000, more 16 to 24 years old use the internet than 25 to 44 years old. True, false, or impossible? Yes, it is more. So it is true. 16 to 24 are more users. There are 70 and over there, there are 53. In the commencement of last year, if you are really a professional one, this is a professional level. It, feel, it is easy for you in the starting, but in the later you will feel tougher. In lesson one, it is the easy lessons, and then the, the difficulty level will increase. Now let's move towards the fifth question. The lowest percentage of internet use is with the 55 to 64 years old, true, false, or impossible. Now go, go towards the last slide. 55 to 66. Yes, it is lower in all of them. It, over here is 51%, in the starting it was 24%, and over here it was 31 and 41. Okay, it is true. Now, in October 2004, only 48, 55 to 66 years old use the internet. Only 48, now look at the keyword. Only 48, 55 to 64 years old use the internet. Now, there are two keywords, 2004 and 48. Let's find it out. So, 2004, it is 48 written over here. So, it is true. Now, come to the form. 10% of 16 to 24 years old didn't use the internet in October 20, 2004. 10% of 16 to 24 years old didn't use the internet in October 2004. True, false, or impossible. Now come to the 10%. Is there 10% written? So the last line I, I have told you that you have to keep in mind over here, be clear about what the table does not show. Over here, the table is not showing the 10%. It means it is impossible to tell because it is not given over there. Number eight, the percentage of people in Great Britain who use the internet increased over five years. True, false, or impossible. The percentage of the people in Great Britain who use the internet increased. Let's go back. Yes. Over here, the value is 70. It changes to 87, 53, goes to 81 and 46 goes to 75 and 24 goes to 51. So it is true. Have you checked the question and the answer? Now come towards the activity three, ways of expressing numbers, five minutes. This is five minutes activity. 
there are a number of different ways of expressing the same figure in English. For example, we can say a half, one and two, or 50%, and all they mean the same. It's a good idea to vary the way you express figures in your description of the table or chart. Why? Reason is repetition kills. Repetition kills. So please don't revise the words. Don't repeat the words. You haven't altered the word. You haven't changed the words. All the phrases below, no read the line. All the phrases below can be used to describe figures. Group them into the phrases which mean the same. For example, the word is written a fifth. And let's go down towards the line. A fifth. Uh, one in five, it will also be a fifth. So it, a fifth links with one in five. So in this way, you can find out how many are of the same. Now you have uh, to stop your uh, cell phone on the side and switch the timer for five minutes. And you have to complete all this right on your notebook. Let's discuss the answers. A fifth is attached with one in five. And then look at that. Oh, you don't want. Then a quarter. A quarter mean one in four. So it is 25%. 25%, then one in four, then the quarter. A tenth. Now find a tenth mean a tenth mean ten percent. Okay? Or one in ten. And this way the answer is so easy. Just go ahead. Now it is activity four. Ways of expressing numbers, ten minutes. Now look again at the table about internet usage from activity 2. Use expressions from activity 3 to complete these sentences above the table. Remember to use a variety of ways to describe the figures. For example, you have to use a variety of ways to describe that figure. What you do is, read it again. Look, now look again at the table about internet usage from activity 2 use expressions from the activity three we have read the expressions there to complete these sentences above the table remember to use a variety of ways to describe the figures now what to do consume 10 minutes and try to fill in these blanks here and after 10 minutes we will resume the video and you will get the answers from us so stop your work on your notebook this is an answer time of activity four, ways of expressing numbers 10 minutes. Now read, 16 to 24 years old had the greatest internet usage in 2004. For example, dash out of 10 people in this age used group, used internet. Now, now let's move. We have to find 16 to 24 and 2004 of this in, out of 10 people. Let's move to the activity two. This is 2004. It is 90 written over here. 90 mean nine out of 10. Nine out of 10. So we'll write over here in this place. For example, nine out of 10 people in this age group use the internet. In 2001, just over dash of 25 to 44 years old use the internet. Now the keyword is year here, 2001, and over of dash to five and 60, uh, 44, 25 to 44. So just over, what should be written which year? 2001 is the keyword, so 25 to 44. Let's move back. 25 to 44. In 2001, it is not 61. It means that we have to write just over 60%, just over 
60% of 25 to 44 years old use the internet. Two years later, the figure was just over dash. It means it is 2001. And two years later, this is the twisting point to confuse the students. You have to keep this in mind. That you have to stick with, with the question. Then, and you have to keep in mind all the, 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 the uh, Yorkers and, and you know, in swings and uh, all these of the balls which can bowl you here. Two years later, the figures, figure was just over dash. Two years later, I mean, it is 2001. And if you add two into 2001, it will be 2003. So the question over here is 25 to 44. We have to keep in mind 25 to 44, and we have to write something over here after two years. Now, let's come to our solution. It is 25 to 44, and you know, it is 2001, which is 60%, and we have to add two, mean October 2002 and not 2003. Over here, 76. What is the written over here? 61, 73, 76. We have to write the 76 over here. How do you write? Let's see. just over, overwritten, just over 70%. Two years later, it means two years later. Now let's see again, 25 to 44 for the continuation. 25 to 44, 76, okay. Just over 76%. For the 45 to 54 age group, internet usage rose from just under dash in 2000 to dash in 2005. It might be very simple to find out that in 2000, we have to think about the 2000 and in 2005. Now let's see. Now keep in mind for the 45 to 43 to 4 year age group, Internet usage rose from just under this in 2000 to that in 2005. Now just under 25%, you can write over here, just under 25%. And in 2005, it's reached to 51%. Okay, now let's just see it again. Now, 45 to 54, it was, look, look over here, it was 46, just under 50% over here, and it rose till 75% exactly in 2000. So the age group 45 to 54 is 46, you will say just under the 50%, and that you can say that at row in 2015 till 75%. This was the answers. So these were the answers. Now let's move towards activity five. Activity five, using quantifiers, five minutes. In part one of the writing test, you may have to describe amounts. You will need to be careful using quantifiers, words like much, many, some, etc. Put the words and expression below in the correct group. Over here, there are the expressions, a large amount, and over here, there are the three boxes. Look at these boxes here. Used with countable nouns, used with uncountable nouns, and used with both countable and uncountable nouns. Now let's talk about here. A large amount, where you will put it? Over here, used with countable nouns, men, women, cars, Used with uncountable nouns, time, money, water. Used with both countable and uncountable nouns. You have five minutes to complete that and 
Uh, you have to start your timer and work on this, and then I'll start and give you the answer. Now, this is the answer time for activity five using quantifiers five minutes. I think you have completed the task and let's check the answers. A large amount, where can you write? Can you write a large amount of men, a large amount of women, a large amount of car, a large amount of hours? Or you can write over here, a large amount of time, a large amount of money, yes. It can be used with uncountable men. A little. Can you say a little men, a little women, a little cars, a little hours? Or you can say a little time, a little money, a little water. Yes, a little should come over here. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of men, a lot of women, a lot of cars, a lot of hours. Now, a lot of time. A lot of money, a lot of water. Yes, you can use this in this table. Use with both countable and uncountable. A small amount, a small amount of men, a small amount of women, a small amount of car, a small amount of hours, or you can say a small amount of time, a small amount of money, a small amount of water. So it is more matching over here. You should write here. A small number, a small number of men, a small number of women, a small number of cars. So it will come over here in this countable noun. Or you can say a small number of time, a small number of money. No, it doesn't matter. Few, few men, few time, few money, few words. Or few women, few, it means you should, uh, uh, you should write over here, this and, and countable and uncountable. Fewer, fewer men, fewer women, fewer cars, fewer hours, fewer times. You can use both over here. Fewer and fewer, fewer and fewer men, women, fewer and fewer cars, fewer and fewer time, fewer and fewer money. Which which does it match? I think it should be written over here. Less. Less time. Can I say less cars, less hours, less women, less men. You can write over here in the both side. Less and less. Less and less. You can write, check it out, okay. Now let's move forward. Activity six, using quantifiers. 10 minutes. It must be over 10 minutes. The table below shows how men and women spend their time each day. It's a static table. That is, it doesn't show changes over time, but compares value at one point in time. Notice also that the table has two sets of figures. The black figure shows the time spent in minutes. The blue figure shows the actual number of people asked who said that they do these activities. Now look at the table and complete the description by choosing the best word or phrase for each gap. Time spent by adults over 16 on daily activities. I'll, uh, this is before you. You can uh, just read it by yourself. And after that, there will be the questions underneath. We have to ask or to share, or you have to answer those questions and the given time that is the 10 minutes. Okay. So what is how to read it? Man, total interviewed, 100. Women, 100. All. Average minutes per day. And activities actually average minutes per day. And the number of the people participating in the activities given over here in the blue. So sleep, 100 people participated in the activity and they said that they spent 503 hours in that, 513 hours. So what to do is 508. 
Okay, Bible 8. Now, personal care, that is, wash the dress. 97% people participated and 41 was actually given. This is the table before you. Now you read this table. Okay, fine. You can stop until we're here. And now let's move toward the next. This table shows activity six using quantifiers, 10 minutes. You have to start your timer watch here or your timer in your cell phone. You have to complete this exercise. This is the answer time. Activity six, using quantifiers. The table shows how, this is the first question, much or many time. What should be the suitable? How much time or how many time? I think much. The table shows how much time people spend on certain daily activities. Not surprisingly, everybody surveyed spent a lot of time sleeping. You can say the many times sleeping, it, it, will, it will be uh, senseless to write many times. So you can write a lot of time sleeping. However, men spend slightly fewer or the less time sleeping than women did. So which will be the suitable? However, the men spend slightly less time. Don't say the fewer time sleeping. Less time sleeping than women did. After sleeping, the next most time consuming activity was housework. Taking up 178 minutes per day on average again, though there was a marked difference between men and women, with women spending much or many or much more minutes per day on this activity than men with women spending much more minutes or many more minutes. Minutes are the countable. So the, with women spending many more minutes per day on this activity than men. In addition, a greater amount or number of women than men. So what should I write? What have you done? Check it over there. A greater number of women than men then men reported that they spent time on housework and childcare. In contrast, men spend a greater amount of the number of time on their hobbies. Greater, what should you write? What have you written over there? You have to check with this debate. In contrast, men spend a greater amount of time on their hobbies and games than women did. Very few or many people, very many, can't match with very with many. Very, you can say, uh, the correct will be few. Very few people surveyed spent much free time on entertainment and culture. For the Dash for the majority or the most of the people, free time was spent watching television. For the majority of people, free time was spent watching television. Or for the most of the people, free time was spent watching television. Which will be the correct one? What have you written? You have to say majority. For the majority of people, free time was spent watching television. Next. Almost nine out of 10 people reported that they spend, almost nine out of 10 people reported that they spend several or lots hours watching TV every day. There should be several hours. Almost nine out of 10 people reported that they spend several hours watching TV every day. I think it will be clear for you now. Now the activity seven. Example task one, 10 minutes. Look at the example task one question below 
and then try to complete the sample answer using language we have looked at so far in this lesson. Yes. Now there's a table. The table below shows the pre uh, prevalence of smoking almost adults in Great Britain. Write a report for a university lecture describing the information shown below. Keep in mind, you are writing for the university lecture, not for the named person. It means you have to use the good words here. Cigarette smoking status by age and gender. This is written over here. I'm going to give you one or two minutes to read this. Okay, fine. Now let's move towards the question to the next slide. Activity seven, example desk one, 10 minutes. So what will be over here? The table shows, okay, you, you have to <laughs> write the questions. Uh, you have to uh, fill in the blanks here. You can spend 10 minutes. You can go back to check and then come forward in this slide. You can uh, uh, work with the with this video. We have to go back and then come forward and do it in this, in this way. And then I'll give you the answer. 10 minutes, please, on your notebook. Write on your notebook, then I'll show you the answers. Answer time. Activity seven, example task one, 10 minutes. The table shows dash and compares the prevalence of smoking. It is clear from the figure that some smoking is most common dash. Nearly dash men and exactly dash women are light smokers at this age, while dash are heavy smokers. The figures also show that as age increases dash, this trend is true for dash, the most disturbing figures are those for 16 to 19 years old. Around dash, the percentage for girls in this age group, but it seems that teenage boys dash. Now look at the answers. The table shows, over oh, here we have a show. What does the table show? Let's go back. The table shows cigarette smoking status by age and gender. Yeah, right over there. The table shows cigarette smoking status by age and gender and compares the prevalence of smoking. What is over here? What it compares? Let's go back. Look at the example class one below to complete the example answering. Okay. The report below shows the report below shows the prevalence of smoking among us adults in Great Britain. So among adults, among adults in Great Britain, you can say the among adults over here. Prevalence of smoking among adults in Great Britain. This will be written here. It is clear, it's clear from the figures that smoking is most common and we have to find where the smoking is most common let's come over here which one are the biggest users of smoking 19 to biggest figure is 32 percent over here it's 25 percent yeah that's only 90 percent okay if we talk about 24 22 24 it is 32 percent 5 percent and 36 percent over here 32 percent are actually the light smokers and heavy smokers are 5% and all are 36%. Let's come to the women. 20, 24%, 25%, 5%, and 29%. Okay, answer is familiar. It is clear, it's clear from the figure that smoking is most common among 20 to 24 years adults. We have it right over here, among 20, to 24 years adults, nearly dash men and exactly dash women are like smokers in this age. 
in this age mean we have to discuss 20 to 24. So let's move. Twenty twenty four dash thirty two percent five okay thirty two percent are, are the light smoker men and thirty six are heavy this time smoker nearly dash men and exactly nearly thirty percent of men and exactly dash percent of women exactly twenty five percent of women are light smokers at this age now let's move let's go back twenty five percent of the men are exactly 25% and nearly 30% are 30% of men are light smokers and exactly 25% women are the light smokers. While dash are heavy smokers. So let's move over the heavy five and five. While five percent of them are heavy smokers while right over here while five percent of them are heavy smoker this trend is true for dash what is this trend is true this trend is true for what this trend is true for now this trend is true for men and women both this trend is true for men and women the most disturbing figures are those for 16 to 19 years old around 25 percent of them are smokers the percentage of girls is higher than men in this age group but it seems that teenage boys are more heavy smokers than girls. Now let's go back. Oh here, the, this trend is true for men and women. The most disturbing feature are those for 16 to 19 years old around Dash around what is the disturbing feature? Let's see. 16 to 19 years old. Disturbing feature 19 percent, 4 percent, and 22 percent, 24 percent, 1 percent, and 25 percent. Okay. The most disturbing features are those for 16 to 24 percent around dash around 25 percent of them. For example, around it is uh, 25 percent of them 16 to 19 it is 25 here 16 to 19 it is 23 here it may it means we can say around 25 around 25 so we should write over here around 25 percent of them are smokers the percentage for girls in this age group the percentage of girls what should be written over here the, what is the percentage of girls? Now let's see. The women, 4, 24, 1, 25, 19, 4, and 25. Okay, it means the percentage of girls is higher. The percentage of girls is higher in this age group. But it seems that teenage boys, what the teenage boys? Let's talk. Teenage boys, 19 to 16, 19, 16 19 are the teenage, teenage boys. Four are there and there. In this age group, but it seems that teenage boys are more heavy smokers than girls. Now look at that. You can say right before are more heavy smokers than girls. Okay, fine. Now come to the next activity eight. Five minutes. Now activity eight is actually about the part two and you have to be very serious about all this. In part two of the IELTS test, you may be asked to write a composition discussing the cause of a problem and suggesting possible solutions. Here is an example. So present a written argument or a case to an educated reader with no special knowledge of the following topic. 
overfishing of the world's oceans threaten many species with extinction and is putting the livelihood of millions of people around the world at risk. What are the causes of this problem and what can be done to prevent it from happening? You should use your own ideas, knowledge and experience and support your argument with examples and relevant evidence. Before you begin writing, spend a few minutes to think about uh, if of ideas related to the topic. At this stage, don't worry too much about how you are going to express or organize these ideas. Just brainstorm the topic and jot down the notes. Spend three minutes brainstorming ideas for the examples. Question above. Use these headings. For example, causes of overfishing and ways to prevent overfishing. There's a topic over here. I have told you, read the topic three times. And then on your notebook, write down then what do you think are the causes of overfishing and what do you think they are the ways to prevent overfishing? So stop and start your uh, timer and spend five minutes for this activity and then I'll go ahead. Done? Let's move forward. Activity nine, brainstorming ideas five minutes. What we have done, here are some ideas we have brainstormed for the composition. Put each idea under the appropriate heading. For example, factory fishing makes huge catches too easy. Bring in laws to perfect fish species in limit fishing. Create an international body to police the oceans and enforce laws. Fishing provides a quick return of companies and arguments. Huge areas of the world's oceans are not protected by environmental laws. Illegal fishing is difficult to police. Put taxes on fishing, which make it less attractive to companies. Raise public awareness thou through the media. If you should write in it through. Raise public awareness through the media. The problem does not get enough publicity. There is growing demand of fishing worldwide. Ban the fishing of certain species of fish. Now what to do is you have to spend five minutes to organize these uh, ideas or these brainstorming ideas in causes of overfishing and ways of preventing overfishing. Are you done? No, this is the answer time. Let's discuss the answers. We have two uh, boxes over here, causes of overfishing and ways to prevent overfishing. First of all, let's see. Factory fishing makes huge catches too easy. Factory fishing makes huge catches too easy. Is it causes of overfishing or ways to prevent? It is causes of overfishing. It is cause actually. So you have to put it over here. Now, bring in laws to protect fish species in limit, which would be ways to prevent. Create an international body to police the oceans and the enforced laws. So it should be in the face of prevent uh, overfishing. Fishing provides a quick return for companies and governments. So it should be the causes in the causes. Huge areas of the world's oceans are not protected. It should be over here. Now, illegal fishing is difficult to police. Yes, this is also the cause. Put taxes on fishing which make it less attractive to companies. Yes, it should be over here in the basic event. Raise public awareness through the media. It should be the cause. Uh, it should be over here in the base to prevent. The problem does not get enough publicity. 
the problem does not get enough publicity. It may be also the cause of overfishing. There is a growing demand of overfishing worldwide. Yes, it is caused. Ban the fishing of certain species of the fish. It should be in the ways to prevent overfishing. Got it? Match your answers, then move ahead. Let's go ahead. Yes, this is one of the best lessons here, uh, which has arrived. Now what to do is, activity 10, expressing cause and effect, nearly 10 minutes. You can spend 10 minutes on that. On your notebook, you have to write all that, and you have to uh, revise and read it again and again so that you can uh, use that in your personal writing. So what to do is, if you are asked to discuss a problem and possible solution in task two, you will need to be able to outline the causes of the problem and show what effects these have. Here are some useful expressions for doing this. For example, you make these boxes in your notebook. Result is then the center box. And the third box is cause. So result is and then cause. First result, then some words, and then cause. These are the linking words you can say. Um, so let, let's let's talk about result. If the result is before and cause is later, then you can use the word due to, owing to, because of, caused by, brought about by, and account of, as a result of. And if you have a second situation, in second situation, cause is first, then you have to use some words and result is later. So you have to connect cause and result with these words or the phrases. You can, result, uh, you can connect result and cause with these words over here. So, so before solving this, you have to write this down on your notebook and revise three, four, five times. Pause the video and keep revising this because afterward, I'll give you a question. Have you done that? And have you read that? Okay, now go ahead. Activity 10, expressing cause and effect nearly 10 minutes. It stops one and talks two together. Each of the sentences below describe a cause and effect relationship. Choose the best expression to complete the gap. For example, this is actually the question for you. You have to spend 10 minutes, nearly 10 minutes. You can spend less than 10 minutes and you have to train your brain to spend less of time. And if you will spend more time, you have the word again on it. So pause this video, write on your notebook, then what is this? And then resume my video and I'll give you the answers. Yeah. Now, have you done that? Now answer time. Activity 10, expressing cause and effect, one, 10 minutes. Okay, global warming is partially or partly increased emission of greenhouse. Global, we have to find out what is the reason and what is the effect or what is the cause and what is the result. Okay, for example, result, words and cause, cause, Word and result over here. Global warming is partly or partially increasing emission of greenhouse gas. Global warming is partly as a result of increasing emission of greenhouse gas. Now, the decline of manufacturing industry, the decline of manufacturing industry on account of it brought about high unemployment in many countries. Now look at this. The decline of manufacturing industries, but this is a cause. And over here, high unemployment in many countries. This is the result. Let's move. This is a cause and this is a result. 
And when there is a like the cause and result, we have to use these words. Results in causes, gives rise to, leads to, brings about. So I have used the word over here. There are the brought about. So we have to write, use this word brought about. Now next number three. People are more worried about crime. Exaggerated reports in the media. People are more worried about crimes. Okay, what should we write? On account of or brings about exaggerated reports in the media. So what is this? People are more worried about crime. Exaggerated reports in the media. This is actually the result. This is actually the result because of this. This is actually the cause. So let's go over here. This is the result and cause case. Due to, owing to, because of, on account, because of, caused by, brought about by, on account of, as a result of. So, in three, people are more worried about crime on account of exaggerated reports in the media. Number four, increasing pressure to work over time owing to or causes parents to spend less time with their children. We have to find which is the cause and which is the result here. Causes, increasing pressure to work over time, parents to spend less time. So this is actually a cause and this is a result. So we have to use this expression, cause, result, and this is the result here. So causes. Number five, drugs after the treatment of AIDS remains unavailable to millions. Owing to, gives rise to their high cost. So drugs for the treatment of AIDS remain unavailable to millions. What is this? Is it a result? or it is a cost, higher cost. This is a cost, their higher cost, this is a cause, and this is a result. So we'll go to the result and cause case. Result and cause case, we'll write over here, owing to, because owing to is written over here, owing to. Owing to their high cost. Number six, globalization, as a result of or has given rise to a bland pop culture followed by young people worldwide. So what is this? Globalization, is it a cause or a result? Globalization as a result of a bland culture, no. It should be the globalization has given rise to, why? This is actually uh, the cause, and this is a result. For example, result and cause case. This is a cause, this is a cause, and this is a result. So cause and result case. Cause and result case. We go to the cause and result. Has given rise to, gives rise to, we'll use according to the, has given rise to. So globalization has given rise to a bland pop culture. Number seven, poor discipline at school is due to or leads to poor parenting at home. So what do you say? This is actually the result and this is the cause. So this is, is due to, poor discipline at school is due to poor parenting at home. You can go at the back. So result and cause is due to, we are going to just use due to it. Now the last one, if it will go back uh, at the side, then I'll explain. The desire for higher profits on account of leads to companies setting up in countries where labor is cheap. So leads to, we over here in the first uh, se session, <laughs> it is the result and there's a cause. Uh, uh, there's a result cause and it is a result so it leads to now 
Answer, answers are clear, move to the next. Activity 11, yeah. Yes, science activity. Expressing cause and effect, five minutes. You should spend five minutes on this. For example, it is written over here. Uh, now, let's see. Now, let's see how these expressions can be used in our composition about the overfishing of the world's oceans. Complete the paragraph by using appropriate phrases from activity nine. There are a number of reasons why overfishing of the world's fish stock has reached crisis level. Firstly, catching large number of fish has become very easy. Dash. Modern methods of factory fishing. Secondly, the scarcity of fish. Dash. Higher prices, making fishing a more attractive industry for governments and companies to invest in. This dash even more fishing and dash a vicious circle of increasing demand and diminishing for a supply. Furthermore, fishing in most parts of the world remains uncontrolled dash the lack of environmental laws. Finally, where laws do exist, they are difficult to enforce dash the lack of international maritime police authority. So you have to spend five minutes to complete this and you can pause the video. You can, you should pause the video and start your cell phone timer right on your notebook. I'll check and I'll be answer time of activity 11. <laughs> so over here, there are a number of reasons why overfishing of the world's fish stock has reached crisis level. Firstly, catching large number of fish has become very easy owing to modern methods of unit right, owing to modern methods of the factory fishing. Secondly, the scarcity of fish results in higher, right? The results in results in higher prices, making fishing a more attractive industry for governments to companies to invest in. This leads to even more fishing, and I know here it leads to leads to even more fishing and gives rise to a vicious circle, gives rise to one four, give rise to a vicious circle of increasing demand and diminishing supply. Furthermore, fishing in most parts of the world remain uncontrolled because of the lack of environmental laws. Because of, right, the word because of in the perfect place. Finally, where laws do exist, they are difficult to enforce due to the lack of international maritime police authority. So keep in mind, in number one, going to, number two, results in, number three, leads to, number four, gives rise to, number five, because of, and number six, due to. Let's move forward. Yes, a very interesting activity is here now. And it is activity 12, suggesting solutions, nearly 10 minutes. It's the first uh, activity of the two activities. Once you have discussed the causes of a problem, you are ready to put forward your suggestions for possible solutions. For every suggestion you make, you need to back up your argument by explaining how this idea will help. Again, there are useful words and phrases for you to do this. You can revise my video and uh, listen to me again. Next, the phrases below are used to show the purpose or reason for doing something. Match each one with the verb form which follows it. For example, this is the list one, this is the list two, we have to match these lists. So that in this way, with the purpose of, in order to, so as over here to prevent overfishing, overfishing is prevented, preventing overfishing, match these two, uh, these all the boxes with each other. Have you matched that? Let's move down. 
Number one, so that in this way, uh, to prevent overfishing, overfishing is prevented, yes. In this way, overfishing is prevented. So one should be matched with B here. Number two, with the purpose of, with the purpose of to prevent, it is not grammatically correct, of and then to. With the purpose of preventing overfishing, second must be with the C. Now, in order to prevent overfishing, so first with B, second with C, and third with A. This should be uh, the, the, the matching line. Activity 12 now. Beautiful. I love this. I hear my picture. No, I'm looking beautiful. <laughs> okay. Uh, now complete this paragraph with the phrases from above. For example, what can be done in dash prevent fish species being whipped out by overfishing? One immediate measure is to put a complete ban on the fishing for certain species of fish. Number two, uh, there's a blank over here. Save them from extinction. Environmental agencies should work to give the problem a higher profile in the media. Number three, the public become more aware. Governments can help by imposing taxes on the fishing industry. Dash, companies may be less likely to see fishing as an easy way to make money. Government should also bring in stricter laws in order to prevent fish stocks from uncontrolled factory fishing. Finally, an international body ought to be created enforcing these laws worldwide. So what to do is, you have to spend 10 minutes on this. And this is actually your, and this is actually your home task. I'm not gonna give you the answer of this test. Yes, you can write in the comments below the answers of this and also the answers of all others. Then you have to stay connected with me through uh, my YouTube channel, through my Facebook, or you have to comment underneath and you have to answer these underneath. I'll give you the answers again or I'll make the same video again for you or for, to explain more about it. Now, activity 13, example task two. Here is another example of a task to a question requiring a problem and solution approach. Spend five minutes brainstorming the questions and then write your composition using language we have looked at during this lesson. Present a written argument or a case for an educator reader with no special knowledge of the following topic. What is the topic? the number of indigenous people living traditional lives in the world's rainforest are becoming fewer and fewer. Within a few decades, the last of these indigenous tribes may have disappeared forever. What are the causes of this problem and what can be done to prevent it from happening? You should use your own ideas, knowledge and experience uh, and support your own arguments with examples and relevant evidence. Read, it, read this topic three times, then you have to write an essay. Write an essay and inbox me that essay. I'll check that for you. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to give you the answer. Lesson review. Learn, we have learned about the different kinds of the writing you may have asked to do in the test. Practice reading and understanding tables. We looked at different ways of expressing numbers. We practiced brainstorming ideas for compositions. We revised language for expressing purpose, cause, and effect. We looked at ways of writing problems and solution type compositions. Now I'll say I'll say one thing to you, to all my students who are watching me here. You have to subscribe my channel so that I may make better interactive lesson videos. If you will follow me, 
you will definitely be able to get more than the required band. Band eight is not a dream. It is so easy to get. You should know the tricks and the manner to get band. Okay. You need not to be, be too much educated to, band, to get band eight. You just know the tricks as a baller. If you're a baller in a cricket game, you should know where to show the ball to take the wickets. If you will know the place to show the ball to take the wickets, you will get the wicket. You need not to be very much educated for that. So this is really like that. So write in the read, write in the comments below, and you have to find me on YouTube. I'm Imran Ali Imran, and leading a gold level IELTS partner institute of British Council in Faisalabad, Pakistan. Thank you, Allah Hafiz. Assalamualaikum.